the Victorians would have built it quicker. Here's a comment I see frequently in relation to modern railway projects such as East West Rail or HS2. But as I explained in the previous video, building quickly often came with a human cost. If you haven't watched that video, I'd encourage you to watch that first. In this video, I'll talk about some of the other reasons why building anything in this country may take longer than it did 150 years ago. One of the biggest challenges when building any new infrastructure isn't the scale of any one structure, although HS2 is delivering many UK firsts, but more crucially it's the number of structures which must be built, which makes building any infrastructure in the UK challenging. HS2 typifies the problem simply due to its length, with the contractors delivering the new railway having to build 500 structures in total, which includes 52 significant viaducts and 175 other bridges. In addition, 105 kilometers of board tunnels are being constructed, as well as six cut and cover tunnels. Sure, the early railway pioneers also built a large number of bridges, and Network Rail is now responsible for maintaining 30,000 across the 10,000 mile long network. But the Victorians didn't have to contend with the 2,300 mile long motorway network nor the expansive dual carriageway network which was constructed after the railway boom had ended. There are also, unsurprisingly, more homes in the UK now than there were in 1921. Back then, there were only 9 million residential properties, compared with around 30 million today. Not that the early railway pioneers cared too much if there were houses in the way, often only the landed gentry were spared being made homeless if the railway needed to be built through homes. But homes and roads aren't the only obstacles modern engineers have to contend with, as now in the UK there are also 4,000 miles of high voltage power lines and 5,000 miles of high pressure gas mains, which simply didn't exist 100 years ago. Even when the early railway pioneers did have to build bridges, they often built the smallest structures they could get away with, or the technology of the time would allow usually using techniques which hadn't changed much since the building of the canal network. During the early years, there were no strict standards that engineers had to stick to, so they just built what we would now call the minimum viable product. This means we have been left with thousands of legacy structures, which are nowhere near able to accommodate modern vehicles. Most structures, which are now road over rail bridges, were built just wide enough for a horse and cart to pass and there are countless rail over road bridges which are struck by modern vehicles on a regular basis due to how low they are. Modern rail over road bridges on the other hand typically have to be built to allow 5 metre or 16 foot tall HGVs to pass underneath and there are a myriad of other rules, regulations and guidelines dictating size, materials and safety features. In addition, many legacy structures over the railway were built just big enough for the trains of the day to pass underneath, which is something we're paying for today, and is one of the main reasons why electrifying the existing network costs so much in the UK, as bridges and tunnels often have to be adjusted to provide space for overhead line equipment. So, it's clear building infrastructure in the UK is more challenging now than it was during the railway boom. Even though technology and building techniques have advanced significantly over the past 100 years or so. Whilst it's true to say they couldn't have predicted the existence of modern HGVs, it's also true that having to stick to very tight design parameters and build larger structures means modern bridges are more complicated and require more earthworks. So it is a valid observation. I would just like to add, it is possible to appreciate Victorian engineering whilst also acknowledging the human cost, and that many railway structures were not so well designed. I still look in awe at some of the structures that were built during the railway boom, but I now have a better appreciation of the sacrifices made by the people who built them. Building bridges is only one part of the problem, and now there are laws in place to protect both the built and natural environment. People may scoff at the money spent on a bat mitigation structure on the HS2 route, but engineers today have to comply with laws which were put in place to protect endangered species. 
laws which they cannot simply overlook because they're inconvenient. This unfortunately adds to the complexity of a build, which in turn adds to the cost and the time it takes to build a section of railway, or road for that matter. Railways and roads also have to be constructed to be more resilient, as climate change is making our weather more changeable, and means we are seeing increased rainfall. I spoke about cuttings in the previous video, which are now failing with alarming regularity due to the steepness of the slopes and the increased rainfall. But nowadays engineers have to take weather into account. And whether or not you believe climate change is man-made, there's no denying that weather in the UK is becoming more variable, with long periods of rain which can cause earthworks to fail. Much of the work associated with HS2 has also been to undo the environmental mistakes of the past. For example, it took four years just to reclaim and decontaminate the Washwood Heath site after decades of industrial use and that was before work to construct the Bromford Tunnel Portal could even begin. All of this is not to say that I'm not frustrated by how long it takes to build infrastructure in this country. But I also get the impression that when people say the Victorians would have built it quicker, they also tend to factor in the years of discussion, planning and design work that has to take place before the first shovel hits the ground. HS2 is a prime example of this, as the hybrid bill required to allow for the construction of the line took years to complete, and is considered one of, if not the largest bills ever deposited in Parliament. The first serious proposal for a new railway was first put forward in 2009, but the hybrid bill process didn't get underway until 2013, and the first phase between London and the West Midlands didn't gain royal assent until 2017. That's eight years after the publication of the initial New Lines report, which was conducted by Network Rail. Construction of HS2 has only been underway for around five years, and now large elements of the project are starting to be delivered, such as the UK's longest railway bridge and around 75 kilometers of tunneling so far. The new section of East-West Rail, which is using a development consent order rather than a hybrid bill, will still spend years in the planning and design phase before construction even begins. I know there will be those who have watched both videos who will still see the Victorian era with rose-tinted glasses, but I hope I may have convinced some people to stop and think before saying or typing the Victorians would have built it quicker or, at the very least, started a dialogue which forces us to look at the legacy and cost in terms of human life, and appreciate more the infrastructure which has been built in the last four or five decades, which is equally as impressive as the structures built by the Victorians. <laughs>